and what is the problem in Ireland? And I have experience of that myself because I uh, put three children through the education system. And that is where I discovered that as a citizen in a republic, I have no rights. I do not have the right to freedom of conscience. I do not have the right to be free from discrimination. I do not have uh, the right to equality before the law. And no matter what I did on who I complained to, I never got any satisfaction. And I realized then that there was a problem in the education system. Now the problem, uh, um, I'll start at the end instead of the beginning. The Irish education system is a breach of human rights law. It is simply that. It is incompatible with basic human rights. The United Nations and the Council of Europe have raised concern about the rights of secular parents in the Irish education system. And the reason they do this, they did this, is because in Ireland, the state under our constitution provides for education. Now, they can set up state schools. There's nothing in the constitution that stop them, stops them. But they, the way the system ha has evolved, they provide for education. Um, so, and most of the patrons in Ireland are religious patrons. Now, everybody thinks that it all started off and they're just denominational schools, but if you actually look at that section in the Constitution, there is a right for minorities to go to that, those schools. Uh, um, it is not an absolute right that it is a religious school because the system was set up, up as a multi-denomination. It was never intended to cater for just one religion but it has evolved over the years into that. Now the state is obliged to provide for education. That means every, every uh, primary school child in the country has a right to an education. They can't deny you that, so they have to provide it. So what's happening is that the state is providing for the education of uh, the children of minorities in denominational schools. So you're not without your rights you have a right to an education. And what is happening is that they literally, uh, the state, absolve themselves of their responsibility to educate and have delegated that to private bodies and institutions. And when you challenge the system, you will find that you are not equal before the law without discrimination. It's very difficult to um, go through the... Um, Equality Authority to get anything done because if you look at the Education Act, the Education Act obliges the Board of Management to, um, they're answerable to the patron and the patron in most cases is uh, a religious body. That doesn't matter to the UN. They don't care about that. You have a right to education, you have a right to freedom of conscience, you have a right to be freedom, free from discrimination and it doesn't matter where the state provides for that education. You, those you bring your rights with you. And what happens in Ireland is that most children leave their human rights at the school gate. And that is what is happening. So what we are doing is we are challenging that system. We're having great difficulty challenging it, but we are challenging that system. And what we do is, what we have done is identified our human rights. We have identified the case law at the European Court, and it's there. It is sitting there, that case law. We have identified the case law at uh, the UN Human Rights uh, Committee under the ICCPR, that's there as well. And we are using um, those instruments between the UN and the Council of Europe to get our rights. Um, I was once at a conference and there was a, a UN uh, judge there and she said, I was asking her all about this. It was a good few years ago. I said, what are we to do? Uh, and she said, we're not coming in to rescue you. <laughs> You're going to have to use the comments and use the case law at the UN and the Council of Europe to fight for your rights. Use it as a tool to fight for your rights. And that is what we do all the time. We use uh, the general comments of the UN and the Council of Europe to fight for our rights. Now, in, as far back as 2008, the UN Human Rights Committee said that the religious integrated curriculum in denominational schools breached the rights of secular parents. 
and their children. They said that it was a discrimination, uh, breached the right to freedom of conscience, the rights of the child, and the right to equality before the law. Nothing happened in Ireland after those comments. Absolutely nothing. It didn't, e it didn't even make the papers, but they have said that. And about, I think it was last week, um, they issued a list, list of questions to the state. The state are up before the UN um, in July 2014, and they've asked the state, they've moved on a bit now the UN, they've asked the state, please provide information on steps being taken to ensure that the right of children of minority religions or non-faith are also recognised in the Education Act 1998 and the number of non-denominational primary schools that have been established during the reporting period. Please also clarify whether there is an accessible and independent complaints handling mechanism to resolve disputes between parents and schools. Now, since 2008, not one non-denominational school has opened in Ireland. They particularly asked in 2008, they advised the government to open up non-denominational uh, uh, schools throughout the state. They didn't say in areas of high density, throughout the state. Because if you cannot leave your human rights at the school gate, every child and every family are guaranteed the right to freedom of conscience, the right to be free for, from discrimination, and the right to equality before, before the law. And it's really, really strange in Ireland that we have this issue over religion and discrimination. It's just like an acceptable part of Irish life. If you said to, if there was an Equal Status Act, and it said in the Equal Status Act that you cannot let a child in here by their colour or because they were disabled, we'd all know that was absolutely wrong. We'd, we, we couldn't understand it. But once you say, you can't, that child can't come in here because we're full up of Catholics. There's no other school in the area. You can't come in because you can't produce a baptismal certificate. Nobody bats an island. It's acceptable in Ireland to say to a family that, does, that are not Catholics in, in the only school in the area to say you can't come in here because you haven't got a baptismal certificate. It's acceptable. Nobody just, it, they just, it just goes on. So you, can you imagine what it's like. You could live next door to the school. You're not Catholics, but you haven't got a right to get into that school. They, what they do is they operate two admissions policies. One, they fill the first one first, and they fill it with Catholics that can produce a baptismal certificate for, for their child. If their space is left over, if you are a minority religion, or somebody that is an atheist or non-faith, you go on the second list. And when they have room, they let you in. And that's, everybody thinks that's okay, except for the UN and the Council of Europe. And that, that fact is a breach of human rights. That you apply to a local school, you haven't got access to the only local school in the area without religious discrimination. That breaches human rights law. And then when you get, if you get into the school, when they integrate religion into the curriculum, and they don't tell parents where they're doing that. You can't opt out of that, your child out of that. That is a breach of human rights law. And that is where we stand at the moment. We're challenging this. He is doing his best, I think, Worry Quinn, to do something about it. But all I can say about that at the moment, not one piece of legislation has changed. Not one rule has changed. No guidelines have been put in place. We have had, going back as far as 2011 and late 2010, we've had a report from the Irish Human Rights Commission. They got submissions from the public on that. They issued recommendations. They examined the Irish education system against human rights law, and they found it wanting. They produced a set of recommendations for the state to use such as uh, amending sections of the Education Act. Nothing has happened with that report. We made a, a, a submission, lots of submissions from all the interested parties and parents as well. Then we had the Forum on Plagiarism and Pluralism. Submissions into that. Members of the public, organisations, the same thing. They made a report. Submissions into that again from everybody on the report. And here we are, not one guideline 
rule or piece of legislation has changed to protect the rights of minorities. And that is very worrying. And it's also very worrying that in recent uh, weeks, the government again are accepting submissions. And yesterday, I think it was this morning, was it, or yesterday, we published ours. Submissions are due in before Friday. And um, um, to help parents make a submission, they um, distributed a leaflet. And they left out of the leaflet the very issue that the United Nations Human Rights Committee had raised with them in 2008 about the religious integrated curriculum and parents not being able to opt their children out of it. They left that out for some reason, and that is extremely worrying. Um, they've put in things like opting out of the religious instruction class, opting out uh, um, of religious ceremonies and all that kind of thing, but they left out the main issue that the UN had raised. Now, we've written uh, to uh, Rory Quinn in recent days and asked him why he have, has left that particular issue out of the leaflet for parents. And we've copied it in the Equality Authority and the Irish Human Rights Commission. And um, we're really worried that in a few months down the line, he'll be changing bits of legislation and things like that. And he'll say, but sure, nobody raised the issue of the integrated curriculum when we ask, well, why are you not doing anything about the main issue that the UN are raising? So that is where we are at at the moment. And the reason that uh, we're pushing forward with um, an atheism, uh, teaching about atheism in Educate Together schools is that you are not even um, entitled in a denominational school to a basic education, a, a basic moral education. Now, there's, there's a section in, in the Constitution that says, says the state is obliged um, to ensure that all children receive a basic moral education. Now, in another section of the Constitution, it says that parents are responsible for the religious education of their children. Parents, not the state. It, they're not together in the Constitution. But because we're atheists, because you don't have a religion, it, you're regarded as having no morals. So the state literally doesn't fulfill that obligation and provide all children in denominational schools with a basic moral education. So we have to do it ourselves. We have to start the ball rolling and uh, um, we've got together with uh, Educate Together and uh, Michael will talk about, a bit about that.